So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about how we're going to get this process together. We have, for the, for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you. So this is the binder leaf. It is more than pliable enough to work with. So that's where we will start. This is always the start of the process. Don't forget, start with the binder. It's times where I'm working fast and I'm trying to get cigars cranked out and I'll just start grabbing filler leaves and I know better, but I'll start grabbing filler leaves and I'll start working on my bunch and I realize that I don't have a binder on the table. So then I gotta sit my filler down, get the binder prep. So if you can, attempt to get your binder stuff ready and already prepared so that's not a full leaf. I would say the goal is to strip your binder down. So there's some different methods, but essentially what you're doing is taking the middle stem out of the binder and you're getting two halves of the binder. Personally, I prefer using both sides of the binder to be my binder for my cigars. I think it does give more flavor and it also allows me a little bit more flexibility when I'm actually rolling my uh, rolling my filler into it. So I would say use both sides of your binder leaf. So what I'll do is strip this for demonstration purposes. Strip the leaf, I just pull the center stem down. It's a trick where you can do, but I'm not even gonna get into that because most people watching this are probably gonna be beginners. So I'll just say you gotta get the center stem out. This is a smaller leaf, so I'm not actually even gonna use this right now. I don't. I want to use a bigger leaf as I can just for to show you guys what I'm talking about. So over here, I have a much bigger leaf. What I'll tell you about binder, the tip of the binder, the tip of the leaf, you'll be able to tell, is, is very narrow at the tip and at the back end is kind of fat. Um, the stems and the inside of the leaf should always be what's facing up to you while you're rolling. Now notice, the tip of this leaf is actually oriented to my left side. So if this is gonna be the first leaf that I put down, I have to roll this cigar from the left side, going back this way. Um, if it was the opposite way and this was a, a right facing leaf, it would be the opposite way, which I can demonstrate on this stem stems of the inside of the leaf i'll have to turn this to the right side and i'll have to roll this from the right side it'll go this way so you have to be ambidextrous when it comes to um rolling cigars so keep that in mind as well you need to roll both ways because if you don't do this process right in the beginning um and you put it in the press um if you put a wrapper that's a right-sided wrapper on the left-sided binder it's gonna push veins all through your cigar and it's gonna look like you don't know what you're doing. So this is a left side roll binder. So from here, if I have another left, I'll put another left on top of it. This part don't matter as much as far as which side is, uh, which side you use for the most part. This, both sides will be oriented with, and these are both left sided, so that's pretty cool. So I lay a leaf right on top of this other leaf, but not so far up. It's probably like maybe half the distance of the other leaf, and that's a bigger binder for me to work with. Um, from this point, what we do, this is something that I will tell you, you have to figure out what you wanna do, but when it comes to rolling, you have to figure it out. Um, I will get one of my blends together right now. I'll have enough to get this blend going. Uh, just to show you guys, I want to demonstrate this out to you. And at this point, I have about maybe probably 20 to 25 blends that I, I do um, when I can. Because the one thing I will tell you guys about this is that tobaccos run out. These companies that we buy from, eventually they're gonna run out and they might not get that tobacco again. So you have to keep that in mind as well when you're buying, like, hey, I may not get this tobacco again. If you only see in stock like four or five different, you know, four or five pounds of tobacco, if you like that tobacco, I would say try to buy it all then because you may not ever get it again. So my blends are consistently having to change because sometimes I can't get that tobacco again. So that's something to keep in mind. 
excuse me. So there's a lot of different methods of how people roll cigars. You will see where people do completely into bottle, which they will take this tobacco like this and they'll roll it all the way around and they'll do every leaf like this into each other. Me personally, I don't like using this method because to me it leaves a lot of stray leaves and just trying to position the tobacco in different places makes it a little bit difficult for someone who's beginning. And I would say as an experienced roller and I've been rolling for years, the method that I like to do, my first piece of Seiko, I like to fold it. First, I'll, if this 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 uh, vein is too, too long, too far down, I usually pull a little bit more off. That takes time to figure out where that is. But what I'll do, I'll get this tobacco like this. This is a Seiko. This is another Seiko that I'm using. I'll put that in the middle like that, the middle of this leaf. And then what I'll do is half, I'll maybe like a, a third of this tobacco leaf, I'll fold it just like that. And it creates this little, like a little sandwich or like a little burrito almost, you know? From that point, I'll hold it like that. My internal leaves, these are two Lijero leaves, which same thing, stem is kind of a little bit longer. I don't want too much stem in my cigar. So I'll break the stem off and that's how much stem is left, just this part right here. So from here, what I will do, I will twist this into bottle. And I think they call this a lazy book. So now this leaf is twisted. You see how it's twisted? I have my little burrito on my hand like that. I put that in the inside, just like that. Boom, right in the middle like that. You see how that is? It looks like I'm putting something inside of a burrito. And then I fold it over. I leave my little burrito, little open, little taco, you know. Same thing with this Lijero leaf. I'll put this Lijero, I'll do the same exact thing and sit it to the left of the, of the other, to the right of the other leaf. Now it's two little things in my burrito. See what I'm saying? From there, I fold it over and I kind of fold it together. Now I have like this little taco in here. It's folded. Big thing. I know where in my in my hand placement where I should break. I typically break around my pinky. That's where I break at for this particular mold that I'm using. I break the tobacco off. Now I still have my little taco. From this filler that I have, I will place pieces of this filler through here to make it where it's proportional. This takes time and it takes learning. It takes growth. A lot of times I try to make sure that I'm grabbing the Lijero first. I'll put some leaves forward and I'll put some leaves backwards just to make sure that the tobacco is gonna be balanced when I, when we're smoking it. I lay it in there, just like that. It's laid in like a taco. This is gonna be, it's gonna look a lot easier when I'm doing it because I've been doing it for a while and I can feel where it's at. From that point, I've laid all that tobacco I just broke back into the cigar. So at the tip, of the, of the cigar, the tip, of, the tip of this bunch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break off a portion. This portion up here, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna break this portion off where it's gonna be almost flat. I'm gonna break it. These are the tips. The strongest parts of the, the, the cigar is in the tips. The tip of the tobacco is gonna be where it's at. I'm gonna lay these tips right back into the front end of this cigar. Sometimes you can portion it a little bit down, a little bit further. That's where we are now. I have my taco. It feels to me where it's fine and it's in a good point where I can actually put this in the binder. From this part, I'm gonna scoot in a little bit so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing on this table, okay? Stay with me. From this point, this is my taco. I sit this now at the front of the tip of this leaf right here. I will sit it here and I will grab it. I will put my fingers right in the middle of it, right? I'm in the middle of my taco. I got all my fingers right in the middle of the taco. I will fold the leaves that's on the table, which is the binder. I fold it into the internals of this taco. I wrap it like that. Now from this point, this is gonna take some getting used to. Every part of both hands have to be moving through this process because you don't want to just twist the top part of it because what happens is the bottom is not actually getting twisted at the same rate so now you're getting you're twisting the inside of your filler 
When you do that, you have canoeing, channeling, and all kind of other issues. So your hands have to be able to work together. So I use both hands to, to fold and press down on this tobacco to make sure every piece is moving at the same exact time so that none of this tobacco is not getting folded at the same exact time. I want this channel to be completely straight. I don't want any bends in my channel. From here, I'm at a point where it feels good, feels right. I got everything bunched in, the back end is good. I would just roll with both hands, just like that. Now from this point, I am smoothing out with both hands at the same time. And you're pressing down on this tobacco. And you, any bumps you feel, you wanna press down with some hard, firm movement on this. And this will ensure that you don't have bumps and ridges in it. Now, the mold is gonna take over some of those bumps and ridges. The mold is gonna take care of it. But I still wanna make sure that it's right in the beginning. Like if I wanted to right now, I can cut this and put a wrapper on it and smoke it. And it's already gonna be straight. And it's, I don't have to put it in a bunch because I can feel that the whole thing is at the same size. But that's what the bunch is for. The bunch ensures that, it ensures that the tobacco is at the right size. And that's what I have, that's the bunch. That's your internals right there. That is the meat and the bones of the cigar. That's pretty much it. All you have to do now is apply the wrapper. And that's the hard part. So from here, I'm gonna use my tuck cutter. You probably won't have this, so what you can get is a cigar cutter and just cut the back end off. From here, you open it back up like that. You get your cigar glue. Put a little bit of cigar glue down here on the tip of that, roll it back, and you are good to go. That is your binder. Now for me, I'm a little bit, little bit more uh, particular with how I like it. So for me, I use my scissors and I will just cut off the edges to make this almost round at the edge. And that gives me a more rounder, um, a more rounded cigar at the back end. From here, because I rolled that with my left side, in this mold, this mold, it will have five on the left, five on the right. So from here, I know that this is a left-handed rolled cigar. It needs to go on the left side. And that's how you keep in control of what you're doing, you know where the what side you rolled on, which side you didn't. So this is left, you do five left, five right. From here, my little card, I just press down on both sides of this press to make sure that tobacco is actually down in there. And then I repeat this nine other times. Five left, five right. From there, you put the press back on. You put this in a press. That's another another part that I probably should have talked about. You're gonna need something to press these things down. I know sometimes people will use heavy books, some people use weights, um, some people will actually go buy a press, but they don't have, it's one, Leaf only does sell a cigar press online, and I think it's a crazy astronomical price. I forgot how much it was. I think it was like a, almost like a thousand bucks. Um, for actual legit press that they use. And it takes a lot of uh, maneuvering and uh, rigging to make it a press because it's nobody who really make an actual press. What it is, it's a shop press, but, but they have some type of plate on it where you can press it down. Me personally, I have this little wooden press that I use, but before that I use uh, weights to put on top of it. So you have to find something to put on top of that and put enough pressure on these plates to make it compress the cigar. From there, once you compress the cigar for usually 30 minutes or so, some people do it longer, I do it longer. A lot of times I will press it for hours or sometimes overnight. But what I'll do is I'll pick a certain amount of time and I'll put it in this press to press down. I'll come back, take this off. I will adjust the cigar 90 degrees. And you'll see, it's gonna be a line in that cigar. So you wanna adjust it where the line is facing upwards. And then you'll press it again. And when you press it again, what it'll do is make it completely, uh, a complete cylinder. And it'll be perfect for you. From there, that's where we go in and start actually applying the wrapper leaf. And that video will be um, a little bit later um, in this process. That'll probably be the next thing I do, just to give you some insight of how it works. Um, I did not talk about the accordion method for bunching. I did talk about intubato, 
but the accordion method is a little bit more traditional. Uh, I'm not a fan of the accordion method because I just can't get it right personally. But this method works for me and my cigars burn beautiful. So I just stick with what I know. Um, and I probably will never switch over to the accordion method because it just doesn't fit what I like to do. But this is perfect for me. And I would say this has been the easiest method for me. I can do the intubado the full way, but intubado, I just get aggravated with the pieces of leaves and I don't want pieces everywhere. And I don't want to have to stick things in the middle of different places. And it's just a lot of extra stuff. So I prefer the lazy book method and that works for me. Uh, from here, like I said, we'll go to pressing. Usually we'll press for a certain amount of time and then we'll come back and we'll actually apply the wrappers.